welcome to episode 47 of the Desmond's Flicks podcast. On this episode, I'm joined by Damien from Witch vs. the Doomsday Clock. You can check out that podcast here on the Legion Podcast Network. I've left a link down in the description below. And on this episode, we are going to be talking about high tension and the loved ones. As usual, we will be spoiling both of these films. So if you have not seen them and you want to check them out, stop the podcast now watch the films, and then come back. So sit back, relax, subscribe to the podcast, and enjoy the episode. So Damien, I'm super happy to have you here, man. It's your first time on the podcast. How's it going, dude? Oh, look, it's awesome, man. Thank you for having me. I'm actually really excited to talk about these two movies and to get to hang out with you and uh, be on the show. So thanks a lot, man. Absolutely. And, um, you know, it was it was fun being on your show too to to talk about the the beach of blood, the blood beach that beach. has no or, blood. Or, or, that has no blood, the, the complete lack of blood beach. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of talk about sucking, and uh, yeah. Anyway, we, we'll move on from that. Which, by the way, folks, check out his podcast. It's uh, you know, Witch versus the Doomsday Clock, which is a fucking awesome podcast. I've Listen to a couple of episodes. Um, we were talking about one that uh, that you did with Court, um, and you guys were cracking me up. Uh, yeah, super inframan with Court and Ricky. And yeah, well, listen, that the episode not 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 only is very funny to listen to, it was fucking hilarious to record. Those guys <laughs> are, are, are so so funny. And uh, I think the latest one to come out will be uh, about Lady Snowblood with Liam from Scott and Liam versus Evil definitely worth a listen because again very very funny stuff and as you were telling me about that movie that movie sounded fucking amazing oh, oh it is like so much blood so much gut so much violence and all just with a a theme of just revenge and love and loss and oh just so good and it's one of tarantino's all-time favorites does it have a lot of a shot of feet? Look, there is a lot of women walking around in wooden sandals um, with their feet. So, oh, again, well. hopefully that wasn't the main selling point. The violence is definitely the main <laughs> selling point. But it's Tarantino, so there's always feet. Uh, always feet. And, mm-hmm. and you know, what can you tell folks about uh, your podcast, where they can listen to it, and, um, you know, where they can check it out? So you can check it out on the Legion Podcast Network along with uh, Desmond's Flicks, a uh, proud member of the Legion Podcast and have been for quite a while now. You can find us on uh, Facebook and Stitcher and SoundCloud and pretty much anywhere you're going to listen to uh, podcasts. It's W-Y-C-H versus the Doomsday Clock. It is basically just me and whoever I want to bring along uh, talking about all sorts of movies. Uh, the current current movies talking about a summer series. So we've had uh, uh, the Ghost, the Invisible Bikini. We've had the Hills Have Eyes. Um, obviously, we've got a couple coming up uh, about Blood Beach, and I think we're even doing Piranha Three Double D. Uh, but I I don't restrict myself to horror movies. I look horror movies and science science fiction and uh, anything. If there's an opportunity for there to be nudity, there's a good chance that I'm going to watch it. Uh, but it's a bit of a laugh. Most of them aren't too long, less than an hour. And uh, yeah, come and enjoy the fun. Well, folks, I've left a link down in the description below where you can go and check it out. Definitely give it a listen. And, um, you know, we're, we're talking about, you know, blood, guts, gore. And on today's double feature, we've got that in spades. And the two films we're talking about today are High Tension and The Loved Ones. Had you seen these films before? And, you know, if you have, what is your history with them? So uh, I hadn't seen High Tension before, so that was actually really, really good to watch something a bit new. Uh, I have seen The Loved Ones, uh, mostly because uh, it's an Australian movie that was actually shot here in Melbourne, where I live. Um, and there's there's scenes in the high school, uh, and that's a high school that I've, I've been in uh, when I was in high school. No, I didn't go there, but I, I was actually quite familiar with it. So I always try to make sure that I watch any Australian horror movie that comes out. So uh, having seen it before, it was it was really nice to revisit it and get back and see a few interesting things. But it is, it's a cool movie. You know, it, it's, it's 
it's an old story of you know the creepy chick stealing somebody or so you know the creepy guy stealing the girl that he loves but the way it's done is just fantastic yeah dude i mean i i'm right there with you and um you know with, with high tension this was my introduction to new french extremity films uh um, huh. yeah and I, this was like where i was i started to get into more extreme horror cinema and i was like i need to watch more new french extremity because if this is what they're coming up with i am all in i'm in all the way yeah because french cinema man they go overboard they <sighs> love just taking it to the absolute limit and like well, even some of the some of the stuff from the 70s which you know which i've watched and um and it, while it isn't as violent some of it is fucking bonkers and you just sort of watching it going you, you know I've, I've got to watch that again just to try and work out what the fuck um the one i watched oh, ages ago i think it was i want to say slaves of morgana or something like that i'm gonna have to look it up but it, it, it was a it's a french movie about like this woman that captures other women and she's a witch and there's all these women living on an island a very yeah uh lesbian friendly environment let's say that i watched it three times and like you can tell i still don't know exactly what it was about but i know that it was french and it was like i'm gonna have to watch so much more french horror now because they like british horror tends to be quite miserable french horror is just i think the right word is visceral like yeah. there's just lots of guts and you go like you, you're almost like wincing going i i know that fucking hurts yeah, and it's just everything about it is so extreme. Um, and and I've uh, I've covered a few new French extremity films, but I'm really excited to cover High Tension and the same thing with the Loved Ones. Um, I I really enjoy a lot of the Australian horror I've seen. I mean, of course, Wolf Creek is like the first one to come to mind that really affected me oh. when I first saw it in theaters. Yeah. And, um, you know, the loved ones, of course. Um, and then uh, recently, I finally watched The Reef, which is fantastic. Oh, um, that is good. Yeah. So, I mean, both of these films, they're going to be a f lot of fun to talk about, especially high tension since you this is your first time seeing it. And um, it'll be interesting to dig into that film, especially once we get to all the twists and turns. Oh, and there are a lot of twists and turns in that movie. It's just like, oh, yeah. The 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 surprise at the end was just like, what? Hang on, hang on. Roll it back, roll it back. <laughs> and speaking of which, our first film we're going to dive into is High Tension. So High Tension was directed by Alexander Aha, and it's starring uh, Cecil de France, Maiween, and Philippe Nahan. I feel like I'm totally massacring those names, but I'm trying my best. And uh, High Tension was also uh, known as Switchblade Romance. Um, that's actually how I first heard about it when it was talked about on BladeDiscussing.com back in like 2003. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, it's... Uh, and, and for that's folks, a much better title. That is a much better. I title. like that better. Yeah, Switchblade Romance just that totally nails the theme of the film. And um, folks, if you've seen this movie before, be sure to watch the NC seventeen version, not the rated R version, um, because Lionsgate edited the fuck out of this movie to get it to an R rating, and the NC seventeen has all of the graphic violence and gore, which. That's this film really shines with its practical effects and gore. Oh yeah, so good. So oh my good. god! And uh, you know this film was about Marie and Alex, who are best friends, and they're on their way to stay at Alex's parents' house the weekend to study. And when they arrive, Alex gives Marie a tour of her house before they settle in for dinner. Um, and 
right before they show up, we get our first introduction to our killer, and he's literally getting head. <laughs> yes, quite literally. Uh, and they, they don't shy away from it. It, it oh. is right up in there. And, um, yeah, the, the way he disposes of his date is just like, oh... Oh my god, yeah. I mean, because he's literally like, you see a head bobbing up and down, and then he finishes, and as he's yeah. leaving, he drops the head out of the car. And mm. we get a nice close-up of that severed head. Just, it's it's really fucking disgusting, and it lets you know, yep, this is the movie that you signed up for. Buckle in. Yeah, buckle in. It's 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 gonna be a wild ride. Now let me ask you a question because obviously this is the first time I've watched it. That head looked just like Marie. Yep. And I because I, I for a minute there I went, hey, is that her head? Is this sort of some weird time loop thing? And I and that stuck with me for the rest of it. And I was just waiting for for like the I was actually going. The, I bet you the movie ends with that bit again, and obviously it doesn't. But it was just like that that kind of freaked me out a little bit. Yeah, you know, the the more that I have watched this movie, the more that I actually love it because of those little things where you're like, oh shit, there's all these little breadcrumbs that lead to how the film ends. That it basically it telegraphs to you from the get-go what's gonna happen. And it's mm. very obvious once once you know the twist. Yeah, well, that's, uh, in retrospect, it was easy to come back and go, ah, oh, now I get it. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, they get all settled in at the house, and, uh, you know, she, um, Marie is meeting Alex's parents. They're all getting settled in, and there's uh, her mom, her dad, the family dog, and her little baby brother. And Alex is taking a shower, and Marie's being a total creeper. Watching her outside, a uh, total freaking creeper. And she's like, you know what? I need to go back into my room and rub one out really quick. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm there going, wow, just fucking, and, and like, and wasn't getting undressed, just fucking hands straight down the dax yeah. and uh, just really giving that bean a good belting. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, I wasn't I wasn't angry about it, but it's like uh, show a bit of class. Come on. I mean, you're you're in a guest room. Her parents are right next door, and you're like, you know what? This seems like the perfect time after being super pervy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, look, you you know, sometimes it is hard to go to sleep in a strange room, and, and you know, I, I'm not going to lie and say I haven't, you know, rubbed one out so I could, you know, get a decent night's sleep in a hotel room, but not when somebody's parents are next door. That's that's you know, that's just weird. A little weird, a little weird, and then it starts to get a bit weirder when uh, our uh, our friend who was getting a little bit ahead earlier shows up at the house unannounced and starts ringing at the doorbell. And uh, Alex's dad, uh, Daniel, walks downstairs to answer it. When he opens up the top portion of the door, I've never seen a door like this, by the way, where the top portion opens up separately from the bottom portion of it. Yeah, I, I've no, not seen one in a house. I've seen one in a barn, but not in an actual house. You know what? As soon as you brought that up, that's right. The the house is an old converted barn. That's right. I forgot about that little detail. And, um, you know, uh, Marie is up there listening to music, you know, flicking her bean, and uh, doesn't hear the father getting completely murdered right away. He gets slashed across the face with the straight razor. It's nasty. Mm-hmm. you know what i love a straight razor killer because it's so specific you know that it's if you've ever used a straight razor there's actually a bit of a bit of an art to it you've got to hold it just the right way you know it, the blade can move in your hand and he just right through his face and it's like yeah and, and then just casually wipes it on his pants that's the bit i like just the wiping on the pants just yep no worries he's gonna keep going yeah, he's very like just okay. I got to go from this room to this room, take out this person, and he he also takes out the family dog, and which always whenever the dog dies, I'm like, ah, fuck. But the dog gets like the least graphic death out of everyone in this house. Yeah, so you know what? I was actually okay with that. Yeah, it was shit. You should never kill animals, but 
it, it, it wasn't like a really bad like murder of the dog. Like you, the dog came off better than well the kid and, and the mother, for sure. Well, when we get the the dad. He's trying oh. to climb up the stairs. Can can you talk about this scene? What happens to the dad? Is he's trying to go upstairs, and then what happens to him? By so, the killer. so you know he's being slashed. He, he's all bloody. He's trying to to like crawl his way up the stairs to to get away from the killer. And the killer just like almost casually walks up the stairs, puts his boot on on the dad's head. And, and like pushes it towards the railing in the stairs and then stomps it through the railing. So like he's just like forced this guy's head through the railing and, and it's just like and again the the sound design with that is you it, I winced because it's like oh yeah. you could almost like feel it. And, and then you know I thought oh look he's probably gonna slash his throat or something like that. But no 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 he then gets a bookshelf a clearly heavy bookshelf rolls it back and rams it full speed into the dad's head to rip it off from beside the banister and it it looks so good and then blood just gushes out and it's just oh it was on there going that's fantastic and and i rolled it back i watched it again and it was just like that is the best kill and the killer doesn't say a word. Nothing. It's just like, you know what? This is what I gotta do. And I was, oh, that that was just the best kill. Fuck, man. Yeah, dude. The, I remember the first time I saw that scene, I I was shocked. And and again, this was like my first new French extremity movie. So I was like, holy shit, that dude's head just came right off. Yeah, holy like- fucking shit. Just ripped off, not cut, not hacked, like just ripped off with the sheer force of that bookshelf ramming into it. And it was just like, oh, it was like watching a melon explode. It was yeah. oh, so good. It was glorious. <laughs> so uh, obviously the noise awakens the mom and, uh, you know, Maria's awakened, but, but Alex is still asleep. She has... Um, What's it called? Uh, she has something in her ears. It's helping her sleep. I can't remember. Earplugs. She, words she words plugs, and things. Yeah, yeah we're, <laughs> we're, we're, talking's hard sometimes. Sometimes it's hard, especially after you witness someone's head just get crushed and turn into a watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> and so the mom goes downstairs, sees her dead husband, and then we get this. I think this is like probably one of the most suspenseful scenes in the film where she sees her dead husband then she sees the killer who's kind of uh you know he's in front of the light from his own car and it's like he's hard to see in a way but you can see him cleaning off the blood off of his blade and the mom just stands there in fear and we don't see what happens to her we only hear what's happening to her as marie is frantically getting all of her shit together and she's like wiping down the sink and making sure no water's coming out and just making it look like there was nobody there. And there's even this great part where she's trying to move this uh, big, you know, cabinet to see if she can plug in the phone. But as soon as she's about to plug in the phone, she hears the the killer coming upstairs. And did you think that the killer was going to find her in this room when this was all going down? Oh, yeah, I, look, I, I thought, you know, because you get the feeling that maybe she's hiding in the shower. And, you know, he, there's that, that point where he's he's walked into the bathroom and he's like, he's, you know, felt in the sink and gone, no, there's no water. And he like he touches the tap uh, and the water comes out. And I, I was literally waiting for him to just pull that shower screen and, and for her to be there and, you know, to be all done. And it's just like, oh, no, she wasn't there. And then, you know, I kept waiting. I thought maybe she's hiding in the cupboard. And he doesn't look in. He doesn't look in the cupboard. And even when he lifts up the mattress, and then you finally see that she's like scrunched up as small as she could be under the bed. I was, I, I was holding my breath. I was <sighs> literally holding my breath. And there's so much of this film that you're like that. You're like, oh my god, oh my god. It, it definitely earns its title of high tension because it really is. It's so, it's so stressful, but also just like 
so captivating and scary at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So, and again, look, the killer doesn't speak, and I think that adds to it. You know, it, it's it, it's um, it's like the Michael Myers thing. You know, just mm. his presence is just fucking scary. Oh yeah, and the dude is imposing, and he just like if I saw this guy walking down a dark alley, I'd go the other fucking way and start running. It's a creepy motherfucker. Yeah, cre- sweaty too. Creepy, oh, yeah. sweaty mother, dirty. <laughs> <laughs> just dirty, and he, yeah, the way that he looks just feels like damn. He like he, he seems like he would smell so bad. Like everything about him is just nasty. Yeah, yeah, everything. And, and so, uh, you know, the killer doesn't find her. So Marie starts to creep downstairs, and she finds Alex, and she's chained in her bedroom. And Marie lets her know that, that she's gonna help her. She's just gotta, you know, find a phone. So she sneaks into the parents' room to find a phone. And while this is happening, she hears some loud thuds outside of the door. So she goes and hides inside of the um, the closet. And this scene, this scene always makes me so sad because I feel so bad for the mom. I felt bad for the dad, but the mom especially because she just – she gets fucked up so bad in this film. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she she gets it worse than I mean. Like the dad's death is pretty quick, the kid's death is pretty quick, but 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 mom, she she gets the worst of it. She really gets fucking just oh oh my god, yeah. That so it's like she's facing towards the um, the closet, and Maria is looking right into her eyes, and the killer comes up from behind. Slits her throat to the point where she's like nearly decapitated because it's so fucking oh, deep. Yes, and it's just like the blood's coming out, and like you can see, like whoever did the makeup work, fucking top phenomenal. Props. Yeah, because you know you can see tendons moving, and you know like she's like, oh, 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 it's like really choking it, and it was just like oh yeah. But then, then you just get that moment, and she's going oh why why, and you see that he's also cut her hands off oh my god dude you hear the sound too of it just going through her hand just oh just really chunky and listen the the sound design was so good yeah yeah i mean the the music and the sound design combine that with the fantastic practical effects it's just it's really unnerving and very disturbing and, you know, we don't actually see the hand being cut off, but we hear it and we see the blood splattering against the uh, the closet door. And then the killer leaves and Marie comes out, sees the mom who appears to be dead. But as she leans down, the mom is basically letting out her, you know, last few words, which it sounds like she says something along the lines of why me? Mm-hmm. And... She dies, and it's fucking horrifying. And then the little brother runs out. And I did not expect them to kill a kid. But they went there. They fucking killed a kid. Yeah. But, I mean, the thing was, you didn't get, like, you didn't see it. Um, right. Um, and, uh, you know, you get an overhead view further in the movie of, like, him dead. But uh, I actually thought they handled that really well. Because you just, okay, you hear the shotgun go off. And then you see the dude like walk out, and it's just like, okay, um, you know, they could have been really visceral, little visceral about it, and they'll you know, blown the little kid's head off or something. But no, they just fucking, you just accept the fact that the kid's dead, and he did not meet a good end. And yeah, this dude has just massacred this entire family in fucking record time, by the way. Well, you know, he well he had a plan. It was clear that you know he didn't fuck around. There was no, you know, no, no taunting. Yeah, it was just efficient. It was just you know what I'm going to kill everybody as quickly and as visually appealingly as possible. And yeah, and again, still hasn't said a word. Not a fucking word. So yeah, I mean it. it it's. Yeah, it's pretty fucking shocking. And so after this happens, the killer comes back inside the house. Uh, Marie, again, lets Alex know that she's going to free her. And um, she she gets grabbed, brought inside of the back of the killer's van. And Marie, or, uh, Marie is able to get in there as well. 
Um, and she's this is great scene where she has a knife in her hand and you're thinking, OK, she's going to stab him. And then this is going to be the point where it's going to be this, you know, cat and mouse type of game. But mm. then he closes it too fast to where she can't get him. And, and again, and then you go, hang on, now, now she's trapped inside and, and you know, she, he's going to see it. He has to see it. And he's just waiting for it to happen. Right. And doesn't. you're like, you're waiting, you're waiting for that to happen. There's so much tension. There's so much suspense. You're thinking, oh my God, like they're, they're both going to, they're both going to fucking get it. How are they going to get out of this? So they're driving around and finally the killer stops at the gas station. Uh, Marie gives Alex the knife and sneaks into the gas station to get some help. And she starts talking to the guy that's inside who's like, wait, what the fuck is going on? And she's like, call the police. She hides. Killer comes inside. Um, and by the way, this entire scene where you see like the clicking of the gas and then she hears it and it goes in slow motion of her running into that fucking gas station as fast as he can. I love the way that, that scene is constructed. Oh, yeah. And you, you're just watching the numbers tick over. And, and uh, in my head, I'm going, it's going to be 30 liters. It has to be 30 liters. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just, just, and it's, it's going to hit 30 and fucking so. And it's, but yeah, again, she's running. You're just watching it. It's going to chunk, chunk. Like, and it's a real old style, you know, like gas pump, you know, with the, the with the solid numbers in it. Unless I was just watching it again. It was one of those hold your breath moments. Yeah. And so much of this film is, is, is like that. And she's also running around like barefoot too. So it's just like her meat mm. slaps just on the, you know, meat slaps <laughs> running across the freaking ground. That's all. And that was a good sound effect too, is her feet. You can always hear it when she's running around. Yeah, that's it. But, you know, somehow she manages to get inside the, 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 the petrol station and, and you know hide and, and then things get really weird oh dude yeah let's let's talk about that scene what so when the killer comes inside what transpires inside of the gas station so he comes in and he obviously knows the guy that is running the petrol station he calls him jimmy i think you know how are you yeah. jimmy um you know what's going on and he, he's like having a conversation about you know you mustn't like work in the night shift so you can get all the women back here and don't tell me you've never had you know some rich old woman come in and everything else and like jimmy's like jimmy's really freaked out but it was like you started to think do they know each other but the way he's talking is like jimmy's getting like really really upset and the the guy's like walking around the store and alex is trying to hide you know as he like from aisle to aisle and then he he comes through and he tries on a pair of sunglasses. And, and again, like Jimmy is looking like just completely freaked out. And and, and you sort of go, Where where's Alex? Where's she hiding? You know, I, I I was expecting for for him like on the on the um sunglasses rotisserie thing, there was a mirror, and I thought for sure he was gonna turn like the mirror to look at his in the sunglasses and see Alex behind him or something, you know, and then like fucking like go and get it. But that didn't happen. And it's just, and then he says to Jimmy that he wants a drink and I'm going petrol stations that serve, like have like bottled liquor, not like just beer or something, but like, excuse me, good quality liquor. Although on the subtitles, cause I watched it with the subtitles, the subtitles say, get me a bottle of J and B. And I've just gone. Yes. yes. <laughs> Jello, Jello represent. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes to the so he goes to the cabinet and um he, he comes back and all of a sudden you know jimmy's there opening up the cabinet to get the bottle out and he does that and, and the also the killer's right behind him he says no no i want the good stuff uh and like jimmy reaches up to the top shelf and, and gets one of the good bottles and as he turns around the killer slams an axe into his chest and <sighs> again you can you you just know that there was so much force behind it because Jimmy goes flying and the axe is like buried so far in his chest. Like he goes down face first on the floor and just to really finish it off, the killer stands on his back and you hear this just crunch noise as you know that the axe blade has gone right like through his chest into his spine. It's like, oh, oh fuck hell. That was just like, oh, that that bit again, sound design, so good. 
Oh my god. And it's such a fucking brutal kill. Every kill in this movie is fucking brutal. But this one, it was just like like you said, with him standing on his back and just pushing down. Mm. And yeah. they really sell it. They really sell that, you know, this guy is just like a force of nature that cannot be stopped. Yeah. And um he... Oh, go on. No, 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 sorry, keep going, keep going. Uh, so then, uh, the killer, he goes back to the truck, um, and Marie calls the police, but they, she can't seem to, you know, explain to them where she is. They can't figure out where she is and she hangs up in frustration. And then she, uh, she finds the clerk's keys and, uh, uses his car to follow the killer down this road. And, um, I, I really like this this little scene where she's following him and, you know, she's kind of like rubbing at her eyes like she's about to fall asleep. Um, and then all of a sudden he's not in front of her anymore. And no, then yeah, the next – He just disappears. He disappears. He, like, yeah, takes a turn and all of a sudden she loses him. And I'm there going, what, what happened? And then, like I said, all of a sudden he's behind him and it, it's, it's, like, it's like Jewel. He's just like smashed her with the truck. Just trying to like drive her off the road. Oh yeah, and it was, uh, and this whole scene is great because her car just goes catapulting. She crashes. She's, you know, pretty messed up. She's got some pretty bad head injuries, and she's going into what looks like uh, some kind of like a greenery uh, of some kind that she's in, um, and she is able to get this. Uh, this piece of wood with some barbed wire around it fashions a weapon out of it. And the yeah. killer is walking around with, you know, his light trying to find her. And, you know, can you talk about this whole scene where, you know, they finally have their showdown and, um, and especially like the misdirect with his uh, flashlight. Oh yeah. So like she, she's wrapped up this like picket in, in like in rusty, like a barbed wire or anything, and yeah, really good. And she's she's like looking through because in this like failed greenhouse, there's like there's plastic falling down, there's like plants and everything, and she can only see where he is from like where he's like shining his torch. And, and she's like sneaking through, and she she's trying to work out you know where he is so she can she can attack him. And she gets closer and closer, and you know she's she's trying to work it. And then all of a sudden, she thinks she's about to get him, so she gets ready to swing. And realizes that the torch is just being held to a rafter on on his belt, um, and and it's just like oh, and then the next thing, plastic over her face, just being suffocated. So he's choking her and suffocating her at the same time with the plastic, and it's just like, and again, right there, this they're going oh, I could almost feel it, and I'm like half holding my breath, and it's just like I'm going bite it, bite it, bite it, bite the plastic. And it's just like, you know, she's she's suffocating and and choking and you know, she's she just about passes out and, and he sort of lets go and then she you know, she comes back uh, and she I think that's yeah, I think that's what happens. I'm trying to remember because this bit was a little bit of a blur in my head because I was like been holding my breath and I got a bit lightheaded. Uh, <laughs> like <laughs> like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I completely forgot how to breathe. Um, and, and then, you know, she turns the tables on him and hits him in the face with that baseball, with, with, the, with the picket covered in, in rusty barbed wire. And she just starts smashing it into his face. And, like, you see the first one and, like, with him, with his actual face. And she pulls it out and you can see that it's all ripped up and everything else. Uh. And then, like, the plastic goes over the top, and she's just smashing it. Like, and again, you can hear that wet sound, that just wet, stuck bone sound. And she's just smashing it and smashing it and smashing it. And she sort of gets to that, like, moment, like, I think, I think I've done it. I think I've got him. And she, she leans in to, to like, check that he's still alive, and she, like, peels the plastic back. And you can see, that, like, the skin is stuck to the plastic just from uh, all the all the little stab wounds and everything else. It's like, oh yeah. And 
not dead. Reaches up, grabs her, like a big choke. So then she's trying to, then she pulls the plastic trick on him and she's like, she's choking him out, choking him out and suffocating him. And eventually he stops. And she like, and she, she sort of half falls back and just lets out this just guttural scream. And he, it's just like, oh, ever it just said pain, it said suffering. It was so good, and it's just like, oh, you know, there there was like an element of relief, but it was it was that real primal, just so and like she's fucking got, good. She, oh, that yeah, that's right. She hits him in the head with the rock. Yeah, when, when he's choking it. Yeah, I was trying to remember what it was. Yeah, and, and like he he like just reaches up and pulls his hat up. And you can see there's all the blood and stuff coming out. And that was, oh, again, really, really clear, really just just bloody and visceral and just, oh, so good. And it's just like all of a sudden, the, like, relief rushes through your body. Like, yep, she's done it. She's safe. And, you know, she she's good to go. Yeah. And, you know, one thing that really gets me is with all of these kills, when you see, like, the, either the impact on the top of his head or, you know, the throat slitting, the blood doesn't come out right away, which is more accurate to what happens with a wound. It's just like there's a wound first and then a few seconds and then it starts to bleed. And I think like little details like that just make it so much more realistic where it oh, feels yeah. like, oh, my God, this because I I've unfortunately seen someone break their head open like this and it's fucking disturbing just like that shit. And it's like, wow, that looks yeah, it's, way it's too accurate. It's a bad accurate. noise. It's oh. a bad fucking noise. When you hear like a skull crack, and I've, I've heard it, I've seen it. It is a noise that will will never fucking go away. Oh. <laughs> you will you will hold on to that noise for the rest of your life because it is. It is uh, you feel it. You feel oh, it in yeah. your fucking spine. Oh yeah, and from here, uh, you know Marie. Uh, heads back to the vehicle where Alex at, Alex is at and Alex seems really terrified of Marie like she looks so fucking scared and while this is happening the police begin to investigate investigate the gas station uh and the murders and they start to replay the videotape from the footage inside of the gas station and here is the big twist the tape shows Marie murdering the store clerk yeah and you know what's interesting about that like you can see what well, when she swings the axe she's got the very end of the handle and she's put her whole body into it like you can yeah. see that she's that's a real which explains why it would like it made such a chunky sound when it hit him because she has thrown everything she has into it and, and the cops just like oh my gosh right yeah and and we also get, in retrospect, we, the audience, we then begin, begin to see how the family murders really happened, which is Marie went, went room to room and murdered all of Alex's family. And Marie is completely delusional and in love with Alex. And yeah. did you see this coming at all, this twist? No. No. Not at all. I mean, it, it was clear that she was in love with Alex, right? It was that was a hundred percent clear that you know that was that was the dynamic of their relationship, but not the fact that she had just so brutally murdered anyone. But as soon as I saw that, it was just like that a hundred percent explains the interaction when Alex is all chained up in the yeah. house and while she was so freaked out about it. I'm going. And it's like all of a sudden you sort of you're almost doing the math in your head, going, I get that, and I get that, and I get that. It's just a bit yeah, did not see it coming at all. Yeah, and you know, that's why like on a second watch or even I've seen this movie maybe like four or five times. I love this film. Um, but the more you watch it, the more you see those little hints. Like like you were saying, Alex not being relieved to see Marie. She's like, Oh my fucking god, get the fuck away from me, you psychopath. Yeah, you see yeah, that in her you eyes. You don't fucking help. Yeah, just fucking get away from me. You are just wrong. And oh. yeah, also that just makes so much more sense. Yeah. Just, yeah. Oh. What a mind fuck. 
And uh, at the truck, Marie starts to untie Alex. And as soon as Alex is free, she starts to threaten Marie with a knife and tells her, you butchered my family. Mm. And Marie is like, what are you talking about? I killed him. I killed the guy. I killed him. And Alex slashes Marie's face, uh, stabs her in the stomach, and starts running into the forest. And Marie chases Alex with a concrete saw, which this is a really interesting scene because then you see how she will basically shift into Mm. the other personality of this killer that she's created in her head. And the killer has all the same wounds that she has, and the killer is the one that is, like, screaming at her in the woods and chasing after her with the concrete saw. And um, we see uh, Alex in the middle of the road, flagging down a car, which in the beginning of the film was Marie flagging down the car. So we see that Marie is the, you know, unreliable narrator, basically. Uh, Yeah, all of a sudden it it makes so much more sense. I'd never seen a concrete saw used as a murder weapon before. Uh, It's fantastic. Oh, my God. All right. Talk about this scene when Alex is climbing into the car and Marie slash the killer is coming at them with the concrete saw. Oh, my God. So she literally runs up across the top of the car with the concrete saw and jams it into the in through the windscreen into the driver and you just see the interior of the car and Alex just covered in blood. There's just, and like the driver's just there going, Aah! and there's blood coming out and the concrete score is going off. And it's just like, and the saw is just cutting through everything like fucking butter. Uh, and it's like, as I said, you know, you, you know, you see chainsaws and all this stuff and you go, yeah, it's pretty good. A concrete saw, Fuck that shit. That that is the ultimate weapon because that will cut through literally everything. And like I said, you just see blood and gore and everything coming out. And just and you know she's slicing through the windows. She's slicing through the car frame. Um, you know you even get the bit where she's like reaching all the way in and and she's hiding on the other side and the blade's like right in front of her face. And yeah, you, know, you can see that there's still blood coming off onto her, and it's just oh, I, that was that real. Just this is like the pinnacle point where she's gonna get her. It's it's not gonna end well, and it's that saw. You know, even if even I couldn't, it looked like, it looked fucking practical, and I'm there going, those yeah. things will mess you up. I, it was, <laughs> you know, that whole bit. It was just like I, I was. Wait, just carve up her car just to get to her, and, and you know. But the interior is just painted with blood and gore. It is so good. It's so fucking good, and it's such a great scene. And it, and you know, as much as like that was hard to watch, it was almost harder for me to watch uh, Alex take out the piece of glass out of her Achilles tendon. Oh, 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 oh. yeah, I know. yeah. Yeah, I was, I was watching just going, oh, your your foot is messed up. And, like, all of a sudden I realized that it's her Achilles. Yeah. Oh. And, like, she's trying to pull this, like, not just a little piece of glass, like a big, like, hand-sized piece of glass out of her Achilles. And, and oh, yeah, that, oh. that that one made me wince a little bit. I was there, and, and I actually, like, I was actually, like, moving my ankles. Just, oh. <laughs> what are you doing? Just going, oh. oh. Trying to, like, twist away from it. Oh, it was just, Yeah. That was just like, you know, it's all over, right? She can't move. And she's that piece of glass was like, nah, that's it. She's done. She is fucking done. Yeah. I mean, the, the other, the one like cringeworthy scene that I can think of comparative to this is the one in Revenge where the glass gets inside of the guy's bottom of his foot and he's like digging in his foot and trying to pull out a little piece of glass. Uh, 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 oh, it's yeah. so hard to watch. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so uh. Alex has been able to take a crowbar from uh, the toolbox and she's crawling along the road and 
Marie is like shifting between the killer and herself. And, you know, Marie is forcing Alex to tell her that she loves her. And as soon as Alex says that she loves her, she shifts back to being Marie again, kisses her. And it's so like, it's all like fucking sticky and wet, not in a good way. And <laughs> it's oh, like, oh, oh it's sticky and wet with blood. No, it, it, they're both covered in blood. Yeah. And it's a good into it and then there's like half a second where she kind of gives in and then you just see that crowbar come right out the back and it's like oh again the sound design so good and and marie starts starts saying she'll never let anyone come between them you know whispering it over and over and over again which she was saying at the very beginning of the movie too and yeah. uh, the final scene shows Marie in a psychiatric hospital room, and Alex is watching her through a one-way mirror. And she's asking, you know, we can't see who it is, but she's asking the person that's around her, like, can she see me? And then all of a sudden, Marie grins, reaches for Alex, and she's aware that she's there, and then the credits roll. What the fuck? Such a good ending. It's just like, yeah, all of a sudden, she knows. She knew she was there. She's like, ah, <laughs> I love yeah. you. Oh, what? You could, yes, I love you. We'll never be apart. And I'm going, yeah, no, nah. yeah, no, nah, bro. No, nah, I'm good. Nah, I'm going to go live by myself in the mountains <laughs> oh, in a no. fucking fortress because I, I don't want even a half a chance of anyone being in the Zat. Oh, it's bad, bad motherfucking shit. Oh, man. <laughs> What a great fucking movie. This this movie was only yeah. made for two and a half million dollars. And it's fucking fantastic. The practical effects on display. Yeah. And that's what, what I mean. The practical effects in this movie are so good. You know, once you realize that there are, it's obviously a limited number of locations, which is good. And everything else. The practical effects alone, um, you know, it's so which is not a movie for, but the tension that goes with it, the editing. And look, I, I, I actually watched it twice. I watched the dubbed version and then I watched the subbed version. Um, Cause sometimes you, you get a little bit of a different feel when right. um, the characters are speaking, speaking their own language. Um, having said that the, the dub was actually better than the sub because some of the subtitles were bit off, which was a, which was a shame because it kind of took away from it. But, you know, for that amount of money, I mean, find me a Hollywood movie that's that good for that amount of money. Right. It's, yeah, I mean, it's it's fantastic what they were able to do with limited budget. And I, you know, as much as I love a lot of Alexander Aha's newer films, he hasn't reached this level of, like, guts and gore and just like this amount of tension i like i don't feel like he's reached this again and i so want to see another film like this from him the closest i feel like he's gotten to this again was the hills have eyes remake yeah look in all honesty and i'm not a fan (laughs) i'm not a fan of the hills have eyes remake the original is still while it's it's not great um it's still i i feel superior yeah, I mean, it's I I'd rather see Alexander Aha do a film like this again, do a hardcore slasher oh, again like this. Yes. Yeah. I mean, there was so much going for this, you know, and you know, it's not dialogue heavy. Um, you know, you the tension, the fact like the reveal, it was still so good. You know, everything about it was was so positive and so emotional. You know, why Why bother remaking something um, when let's say you could do something like this again? To do even even a similar movie, you know what? Let her, let fucking Marie escape from the mental institution. Let her fucking do something else. Right. Um, that, you know, I would fucking pay to see that. Oh, hell yeah. And then have her, like, you know, go back and forth between the killer. Because I want to see the killer again and see, like, the fucked up shit he does. Yes. Yes. Like, yeah, let's say have her cut between the two. You could make an awesome movie just cutting between the two of them. 
uh, um, the you know even like doing it and then having having her react to finding the bodies and all that sort of stuff would be awesome. And you watched the unrated version, right? Yes. So I saw okay. everything. Good, because the, the the first time I watched this movie, I watched the rated R version, which is there's so much cut out of this film to make it rated R. Um, so yeah. much. Uh, you know, it's about, it's actually about a minute was cut to avoid an NC-17, wow. which is a pretty yeah, like, good amount. Yeah, well, because I know that, I, I think I, I was reading, in, I was reading in the, uh, in the, the Wikipedia, they, they cut out um, the bit where the dad gets his head taken off um there was less of when the mother gets her throat slashed um there were a couple of other things too that i can't remember off the top of my head but those were the two main ones yeah and then also the the driver being disemboweled with the concrete saw was shortened uh, uh, too yeah that's right yeah that's right yeah that was cut down having said that like i said uh, i thought the the version that i saw like, was, was the unrated version uh, even look, even if you'd taken some of those bits out, it still would have been a really it would have been a good movie, but you add those bits in and it's a fantastic movie. Totally agree. And uh, you know, for you, what would you give this a one out of five? And what are your final thoughts about high tension? So for me, this is this is a solid four and a half. Absolutely solid four and a half. Um loved it. Uh, I would look much like you for anyone that wanted to, to really get into like French extreme. Um, this is such a good gateway. Like some of the, some of the French extreme stuff goes personally uh, a little too far. Um, and it's just like, yeah, it's sort of got to the point where it's not enjoyable, but this has chin and horror and such good effects somewhere that is full of tension and violence and has a really good twist ending. So can't recommend it high enough. I, I'm right there with you, man. I'm, I got to go four and a half out of five for this for me too. Um, I know for some people, they don't like the twist. They actually think the twist isn't very good. I mean, I totally get that. That's, you know, it's, it's subjective. Some people don't like that. Some people do. I personally think the twist is pretty cool um, because it's like, you're you're in you're in her mind basically you're seeing how she's basically like shifting between these two different people in her brain and trying to rationalize and remove herself from these murders that she did by creating an alter ego that is actually murdering this family as well as you know torturing her friend um because at the oh. beginning of the film they seem like really close friends like you know, related and or what, or the fact that Alex maybe really wasn't aware that you know Marie, um, you know, obviously had some sort of uh, emotional connection to her outside of just being friends. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it's it's definitely telegraphed, but yeah, I mean, this movie is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, so good, so good. Absolutely, absolutely, cannot recommend it high enough. And I'm so glad this was your first time watching it. We were able to talk about it right after you saw it. That's awesome. Which is, it's just fantastic. It is absolutely fantastic. And so I would just, oh, so good. So good. So violent. Just so everything. <laughs> Satisfy your bloodlust. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, unlike the, uh, the other quite popular French extremity, which is obviously Marty's. Don't enjoy that as much. <laughs> that is a really hard film to get through. I'll, I'll cover that on on the show at some point. But damn, that is that is a really difficult film to watch, and that is a really mean movie. Yeah, yeah, it is. It, it it's it, that's the right word. It's mean. It's just fucking harsh. Yeah. Um, I, I think I've tried to I've tried to watch it at least three times. Um, I've only watched it all the way through once. It's an endurance test. Like that and a Serbian film are both an endurance test to watch. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and yeah, and, uh, I, I like to watch movies for fun. That, that wasn't fun. Neither of those. Yeah. Are but high tension is fun. So you folks should definitely oh, yeah. give it a rewatch for sure. Get in there and, and watch it. Yes. 
Um, that movie I was talking about at the start was Slave Girls of Morgan Le Fay from the mid 70s, and it is a French uh, fantasy horror movie. And it, like I said, it is fucking bonkers, but well worth the watch. Oh, I'm going to have to check that out for sure. That sounds awesome. And uh, folks, we're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, we're going to dive into our next film, which is The Loved Ones. This will keep us quiet. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. You caught me cutting a new show. I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet! My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash legion podcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash legion podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now, back to the cutting room. And welcome back. We're about to dive into our next film, which is The Loved Ones. You come to the prom? Yeah, I'm going with Holly. Look at you. Let me get the door, my lady. Oh. Ah. Pretty as a picture. Will you go to the dance with me? Sorry, Loma. I'm going with Holly. Guess who asked me to the dance? Hey. message. Brent's done this before. He's always turned up. song we're gonna dance to and there's only one way to find out if it's you boys shouldn't it girls i'm going to stab holly in the heart just like you did to me And this is directed by Sean Byrne and starring Xavier Samuel, Robin McLeavy, and Victoria Thane. And this film, this is actually, I saw this after Sean Byrne's second film, which is, um, oh gosh, why am I, uh, The Devil's Candy. Oh, that movie. Top movie. Yeah. Fantastic film. I saw that first. And then I watched The Loved Ones. Um, I almost called it Strangers with Candy. <laughs> I'm like, that's not it. <laughs> no, Although Strangers with Candy is a great show. <laughs> yes. Yes. This. 
<laughs> but uh, but the loved ones is about a high schooler Brent, and uh, we start out with him driving with his dad named Dan, and uh, you know they're just like you know chopping it up, you know just sh- you know shooting the shit. He starts to smoke a cigarette. Um, it, for I think there's like a a line that's kind of tossed in that he's uh, going through cancer treatment. Uh, yeah, the the dad was yeah. And P.S. By the way, my mom has lung cancer, and she still will smoke. She will not stop. Mm. And I'm like, "Yep, that's that's pretty accurate." They're just gonna keep smoking. <laughs> yep, there there is no fucks given. It's just like, yeah, you know, I mean, look, I've I've had relatives die of lung cancer, and I've I've been, and this is not a, a sad story. It's kind of weird. I've seen people at the cancer center. With their fucking oxygen tank having a smoke. And it's yeah. like, dude, if you need an oxygen tank to breathe, you need to stop smoking. And it's like, nah, <sighs> fuck you. No, I need it. Uh so- <laughs> 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 and oh, as they're as they're dri- as they're driving along, uh, there's a bloodied man that appears in the middle of the road. So Brent he uh, swerves to avoid the man. He crashes the car and he crashes into, into a tree and kills his father. So three months later, uh, Brent is uh, at school. He's chopping it up with one of his buddies, um, and uh, Lola invites him to the prom. Um, but Brent lets her know and he's very nice about it like hey sorry i'm, I'm going with with holly my girlfriend and yeah. lola the, the look that she gives him is like that death stare that oh you did I'm a <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah that's right you done fucked up buddy and this woman who plays lola oh my god i mean we'll talk about her more as we go along but goddamn, she has the crazy eyes. You, you know the crazy eyes. She has them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything about her says, um, um, first I'm going to kill your dog. That says I'm going to kill your dog, and then I'm going to mess up your shit. Oh, God. And her and her dad mess his shit up real bad. Uh, yeah, dad, dad, dad is super creepy. Oh, yeah, we're going to get to that. And uh, as uh, Brent and uh, his girlfriend, Holly, are hanging out in her car, they start banging. And while they're banging, Lola is secretly watching them like a creeper. Just just standing there. Just, I'm there going, oh, that, 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 again, is enough to make it go in reverse. Because she is, she's everywhere. Yeah. Um, like all all weird stalkers are, but the look on her face is like you could. It, it, she wants to stab him like, straight away. She's just going, "If I had something, I would fucking stab you." And it's just yeah, she <laughs> she she she's not not well, not well at all. I'm gonna get my daddy to help me. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> 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 And Brent, you know, he's he's really guilt ridden over the death of his dad. Um, you know, Holly is like trying to break through to him. There's even a point where she tells him that she loves him and he can't say it back to her. And she he mentions that Lola was the one that asked him out, and she makes a a comment on the side saying, Well, maybe she'll, you know, like more like you more because, you know, you're obviously a you know emotional retard with me. Um, which I'm like, oh, <laughs> ouch! Just, just, just kick him in his blue balls, because that was oh. just hurtful. Oh, I've had that said to me before. I'm like, oh, fuck you! Yeah. <laughs> Damn! So, Damn. Uh, yeah, let, let me just get you a big mug of shut the fuck up. Uh, <laughs> it's a little, little hurtful. A little fucking hurtful. Just a little bit, just a teeny bit. Yeah. And uh, you know, he's he's goes home. He's chatting with his mom and his mom you know she doesn't really want him to to go out because it's going to be in a car and you know because he crashed the car and and his dad died unfortunately um you know he's like okay so it, you're telling me everything is my fault and he goes off 
And he's like been engaging in a lot of self mutilation with a razor blade. And he's like opening up his hand by like just crushing that razor blade in his hand oh. while he's walking with his dog. Fuck, man. Yeah, yeah that's not good. Not good. That's not coping. Not not a good coping mechanism. Yeah, not the best. Not the best. And he uh, he also uh, is like climbing up this cliff. And there's a point where he's holding on and he lets go with one hand. And you know, there's a moment where he's contemplating committing suicide. Um, mm-hmm. But in the middle of it, changes his mind and he just starts climbing and climbing and climbing. He gets up. And he's just chilling up there with his dog. He's listening to music. And then this is when we get introduced to Daddy. Uh, mm. He, like, then chloroforms him, knocks out Brent, knocks out the dog who later dies, which I was like, not the dog. Both the dog died. Two, two movies with dog killings. And, and just, just going right back to the start, two movies that start with a vehicle accident. Ah, yes. Yes, there is a theme. Look at this theme going on. And Twisted Love. Yeah, well, indeed, Twisted Love. But anyway, back to Daddy. Back to Daddy. Uh, So Brent wakes up uh, bound to a chair, and he sees Lola and her creepy-ass dad, Eric. And they've decorated the house into a prom, and... They're all set at the table with a woman that they call Bright Eyes, who's been lobotomized. And we later find out that Bright Eyes is Lola's mom. Yeah. Wow, yeah. what a fucked up family dynamic this is. Yeah. The first time I saw it, I thought that like maybe that it was a cigarette burn on her forehead. And I'm just going, oh, that's a bit, you know, that's a bit ordinary. And then like later, obviously, when you find out that it's it's you know, the, the home lobotomy kid, that just made it so much worse. <laughs> just like, and, and like, as you say, you know, you find out that it's her mother and, and it's like, oh. again, I, I went straight back to, is that the way daddy likes him? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I mean, it seems that he does. And he also seems to like watching his grown daughter and dress in front of him. Yeah. 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 Creepy fucking shit. Yeah, I'm just going to seriously turn around, leave the room. It's just <laughs> fucking do something, man, cuz I could almost like hear his erection and it was just oh, like, yeah. uh, it's just like uh, <laughs> it's just, to take your take your creepy ass fucking out of that room. It's just wrong. Quit fucking staring at her panties. You need to stop staring at her moose knuckle and move on. Oh, I had to bring it back. <laughs> you need to back the moose knuckle. If you're listening to these out of order, folks, you've got a lot to catch up on. <laughs> uh, so uh, Lola then injects Brent's voice box with bleach, which destroys his vocal cords. And I'm guessing that from here on out, like the rest of his life, He's like not going to be able to talk anymore. Yeah, well, because I was it's wondering fun. about that. Because it, it's just like I don't. Th- I think it was actually window cleaner um, rather than bleach, which is like equally as fucking toxic. Um, but yeah, like right into his voice box, and I, uh, straight away I'm there going, yeah, he will never be able to talk again, or uh, outside of <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And was, oh, and you can probably taste it, and that made it worse. <sighs> And it's just like the sound, you know, he, he does such a, I don't know how they, how he did that scream or if they like did something in post, but not only like his screaming, but like the screaming from the people in the basement. Oh, Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> it's just like, oh, it's just, oh, it made my throat hurt just thinking about it. Oh God. And, you know, from there, uh, Lola just continues to humiliate Brent and she seems to be getting off on all of it. Um, there's even a yeah. point where, you know, he lets her know he has to go and take a piss and she like, Oh, this is so gross. She like chugs this milk and they zoom in on her mouth going. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and, 
she puts the glass and takes his dick out and tells him, go pee now or daddy's going to nail it to the chair. Yeah, you got to the can of tin. Fuck. Uh, otherwise, daddy's going to nail it to the chair. And there's like the, he, you can, the look on his face is just like, oh, like he's like completely panicked. He can't scream. Um, he he's going. I, uh, surely there's some in me, and he's. You can see that he's he's trying to do it, and Daddy's there with the hammer and a big, big ass nail, like a big, big ass fucking nail. Just and she's counting down, and she's crouched there beside her, and like every part of me is just going, oh no, like I'm literally curling up into myself. Oh. Just, <laughs> just, just, and like she gets to like nine, I think. And like he manages to get some out, and you hear it. Oh, you you hear it, and then the uh. bit after that, like because dad daddy looks like disappointed, and you know she she says, "Oh, it's crying," and I'm going, "Yeah, but that makes it worse." So yeah, maybe gross. I should maybe I should kiss it better. And like she gets right, right there. And she goes, maybe I'll just bite it off. And it's just like, oh, again, you are just gross. And just, ah, oh, nothing about that was was good. Nothing. Oh. Like, And the thing is, you didn't see anything. You did not yeah. see a single thing. But it was so uncomfortable. So uncomfortable. And, you know, the dad is like just watching all of it like, <gasps> I hope you don't get too close to him. Like that kind of look, like you're mine. Yeah, that yeah, kind of look. Yeah, very that that dirty possessive, just ugh. Ugh, yeah. ugh. But Brett is able to free himself, and he runs outside. Um, and I love this little bit where he's like hiding underneath the car. The dad is like starting up uh, the car. He pulls away. He sees Brent. I think he sees him like in his rear view mirror or something. Or no, he sees him in front of him. No, yeah, he backs up. He backs up and the, the lights swing onto where Brent is um, crouched. And yeah, it's just like, and then he's, yeah, he tries to kill him with the car and chases him up a tree. Yeah, and he's, okay, so I might be kind of, uh, I mean, this was like just my own dark sense of humor, but I found it kind of funny when they're throwing rocks up at him. Um, yeah. and, Lola, <laughs> and Lola's like, let me try. And she's like throwing this fat ass rocks and she finally hits him and he hits the car so fucking hard. Oh, like a broken fucking doll. He just hits it and it's just like, yeah, on the ground and they drag him back inside. But yeah, like there was a, there was a certain amount of glee. And when they're throwing rocks at him up, up in the, up in <laughs> yeah. the tree. Uh, they're just like they're having fun and they're going it's not like he's a fucking rabid squirrel you know it's just like it just but the bit that comes next when they get oh, him back inside talk about oh, this you gotta talk about this scene so they 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 get him back inside and he's he's back in the chair now lola is sitting on his lap Right, like she's all bloody and everything else from when he when he attacked her and everything else, and Daddy gets a kitchen knife and the hammer and literally starts hammering it through his foot, and you shouldn't hit girls and like Lola's screaming in his face to cry, and like you can see. You can see like Brent's face, like he's in agony, and, and you just hear the hammer strikes on it through his foot into the floor, and like she's screaming in his face, and like he's doing everything he can just to fucking hold it in, and, and like again, like my toes were curling up, just uh, listening to the sound of that hammer just smash into it, and then as they're going, he starts smashing his toes. <sighs> And it's just, uh, it's just uh, not only is his foot nailed to the floor with a kitchen knife, like through the top of his foot, but they've just destroyed all of his toes. And Lola's just there on his lap, just screaming, cry, cry. Oh, man. And like Brent, you can just see like the agony on his face is just so good. Like the, the, the actor portrayed it so well. 
the acting in this film is fantastic and you can just see in his eyes he's like i'm not going to give you the satisfaction of seeing me cry yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly it. And uh, yeah, oh, just listen. Just the thought of his feet, just like Ugh. feeling that gun through. Just, oh, I'm rubbing my feet now, just thinking about it. Um, <laughs> I mean, it was fucking gnarly, and he gets both feet, both of them, yes. with fucking knives jammed through them. Yeah, just fucking hammered through them, and it's just like, oh, it's so. You know, and you know that with every fucking hit of that hammer, it's just opening it up more and more. So after after a little bit of foot action, uh, Lola shows Brent a scrapbook with photos of her past victims. And that's when Brent recognizes Timmy Valentine, who's the bloodied man that caused the crash. And Timmy turns out to be the brother of Mia Valentine, who's the prom date of Jamie. This is Brent's best friend. And there's like this uh, side story that's going on, which, you know, I, I actually appreciated the little side story that they had with, you know, the, the best friend and Mia Valentine just kind of hanging out at the prom. She's like trying to jerk him off on the dance floor <laughs> and they get kicked out of the <laughs> dance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Boy, gee, they're both fucking stoned out of their skull. Yeah. <laughs> so high. And there's like this great scene where they just start banging in the car. And the teacher that kicked them out was like, I meant when I told you to leave to take it off of school property, not property. the parking lot. <laughs> yeah. Because you know, they just went back to his car and did it. They, yeah. the, the car was like par- parked out the front of the school hall and he's <laughs> it's just in there doing it. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, and that, you know, we also had, it was funny and it was, it was nice to have like that, that little break in between. Cause it's so intense when we're with Lola and the dad and Brent and Brent is just being tortured over and over and over again by them. Um, and also there, there's Holly and Brent's mom, which I gotta say, I love Holly. Like I love her character. You know, she, she really loves Brent. She wants to find him. She even is like going to take his dog to go get help, but his dog dies. And, you know, she's the one that starts to kind of piece things together. Like, Oh, wait a minute. He mentioned Lola. He must, maybe she took him. Um, and I, I, I like that character and how she comes more into play later in the film, especially. Yeah. And, um, you know, in between all of this, uh, Lola then uh, starts to carve her initials with a big giant heart onto his chest. Like it can't get any worse. And then with a st- fork, oh, with a God. fucking fork. Oh, and starts throwing salt all over it. Oh, oh yeah, you yeah. Know, to just to really fucking make sure it scours up nicely. Oh, and um, after her dad crowns Lola the prom queen, she then admits that she has the hots for her dad, and the two yeah. of them start to dance, and they come very close to kissing. And right before they start to get some incest going on, Brent interrupts them and fucking goes off on the dad. Brent, because he has still had the necklace. The necklace was in his pocket yes. with the blade. So he's been working at that piece of rope around his wrist. He cuts himself free and he pulls the fucking knives out of his feet like a badass. <gasps> Yes, that's right. And then he fucking slashes daddy right across the face and fucking stabs him in the neck as well at the same time. Yeah. That later? Yeah, he's stabbing him in the neck. He's just going off on him. The trap door gets open because they've they've op- they've made the hole in his head with the drill and they were getting ready. See, oh, yeah, to pour scene. the hot water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, like, that, that whole scene. So when he's... When, when you know Lola's, it's her turn to. That's this is her, like her first drilling, and like Daddy's telling her what to do, and she puts the drill on his head and starts it, and it goes Wee! and like scraps across his fucking head because she didn't hold. It. And Daddy's going, "No, no, you got to push harder. 
you got to push harder. And then she starts doing it. And like you can hear it again. You can hear it fucking grinding in. And you can see little wisps of smoke coming oh. out as it hits like the bone and the hair. And like Brent's screaming and daddy's holding him. And uh, I'm there going, oh, again, it's just like, oh, so bad. But when they go and get the, the hot water and she explains that they're going to pour hot water through the hole into his brain and it's going to boil his brain and turn him into one of the freaks in the in the basement. I'm just there going, oh, just fucking no. Look, I was, again, rubbing my forehead, just fucking going, no, that's not fucking right. And and she tries and she spills hot water on daddy's arm and he goes, like, oh, he goes, oh, sorry, daddy. Can you make the hole bigger? And daddy gets Fuck the you, fucking bitch. drill. Yeah, and, and and starts like grinding the whole bigger. And again, you see smoke and everything else. It's just like, oh no, so wrong. So and you can fucking hear wrong. the skull like cracking. Yeah, it's, oh. it's just you hear like the drill grinding on it, and oh, just it's there. And that that's when he escapes. And, and yeah, fucking, exactly. Yeah, sl- slashes Daddy's face and like stabs him in the neck and everything else. And Daddy's there going. <laughs> Look at oh that that not so particularly the bit with the drill that was just like oh man because all of a sudden it was like, I've just gone oh that means they did it to her mother as yeah. well. This is like yeah it's like in my mind I'm going I wonder if she was one of the first ones or like whether they did it a few times and she objected so they you know they drilled her to shut her up and it's like, oh but. I legit had never, never thought of that as a process, like dr- literally drilling a hole in someone's head and pouring hot water in there to fucking like literally just like boil their brains. Ugh. That was just one of the bizarre things. It's just that that whole bit. I like I, I was struggling in my chair and I'm going, I'm not even fucking tied up. It's not like I'm fucking, you know, like my feet are nailed to the floor or I'm both in. I'm there just going, oh, I just, I wanted to move. I wanted to be like, like stand up and go, no, no, it's okay. Because that whole bit, you know, like daddy's like, like literally choking him, just about to hold him. And she's just fucking just all oh, with the drill. Ah, uh, yeah, that, that was so good. And then like I said, when, when he, when Brent like basically takes care of daddy uh, with the knives, and else, it's, it's like, yes, yes. Fuck yeah. You're like, motherfucker. And, and pushes and he him pushes in the him, hole. Yeah, pushes yeah. him into the cellar and throws him in there. And then all of like her previous victims who now have their brains scrambled start to eat his dead body. Yeah, and, and there's like, and you can hear like the crunch and, and the gurgle, and it's just oh, 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 that's so good. And like you know, Brent Brent thinks he's you know he's got it, he's done it, he's, he's managed to escape, only to turn around and have. Lola pushing us. Oh, no. Fucking oh. Lola. This oh. motherfucker. And she's because she was throwing shit at him. Like she threw like uh, the drill and all this other shit <laughs> and yeah. the torch. And I'm just going, oh man. Because oh. she's like she's losing her shit at this point. She's well and truly losing her shit. Yeah, you killed you killed my daddy. Yes, uh, yeah, my, my daddy. <laughs> so gross and so he has like a flashlight and a hammer from you know what Lola had thrown at him and he basically defends himself against the captives and kills them um, and then Lola smothers Bright Eyes her own mom with a pillow because he's jealous she's always been jealous of her mom because she yeah. she was even asking her dad Who's prettier, me or Bright Eyes? And it's like, motherfucker, that's your mom. Yeah, you creepy ass bitch. Yeah, yeah and like, you creepy and, little fucker. Yeah, and they're like, so when she smothers her and just says, good night, mommy. It's Ugh. just like, oh, yeah, you are just wrong. So many fucking things are wrong. Ugh. I swear, yeah. Lola is one of the most underrated horror villains in film. She's such a fucking great villain in this movie. Yeah, and it's and the thing is, it's not like she's she's powerful or anything else. She's just she's fucking unnerving. She's yeah. creepy, like and and she enjoys it too. 
She enjoys oh, that violence so much. Getting off on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When uh, the bit, the, going right back to the, the start, where she's trying to force Brent to eat the chicken. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's having the liquid good. It's free. And, like, and he's going, no. And then, like, she jams her fingers in his mouth and makes him suck them. And she's like, oh, uh, oh. And I'm there going, oh, so just so fucking. Makes me gag. Good. Yeah, just I'm there going, ah, uh, wrong. And it's all, like, yeah. covered in chicken juice and it's all slimy. It's and, like, oh. And, oh. Chicken juice and blood and who, like, who knows what else. But who knows what else? It's just a fucking gross. Don't know where those fingers have been. Ooh, I don't want to think <sighs> so um, you know, this is the point where Holly um calls up Mia's dad. He's a police officer. He makes his way to Lola's house and um he starts to hear some sound. Well, at first he's like peering through the window and he sees like all the blood everywhere. Um, and you know, all this shit thrown all over the place. So he gets into the house and he's hearing Brent uh down in the cellar, like throwing stuff. So he opens up the trap door, he sees him, but right behind him, he he gets a cleaver right to the head. Oh low- yes. Just and again, a real solid just thunk yeah. right in his, his head, and he just fucking tips over face first in into the pit, and it's just like oh. But Brent got his gun, and he shoots and... them all at Holly, <laughs> or not yeah, at Holly, yeah. at uh, Lola, and doesn't uh, hit Lola. her once. Yeah, doesn't hit her. Does manage to to blow up the disco ball though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck your prom. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so I'm going to die, but fuck your prom. <laughs> fuck your prom. And uh, Lola then lets Brent know that she's going to go and kill his mom and stab her in the same way that he stabbed uh, her dad. And then she's going to stab Holly right in the heart, just like he stabbed her in the heart. Right. So yeah. she leaves, and Brent then uh, gets out of the pit by using a pile of corpses. Yeah. Well, we've all done that. Of course. I mean, obviously. That's, how do you get, how else do you get out of a pit? Yeah, exactly. It's a pile of corpses. It's every. Yeah. Night. You see it in 300. Obviously. Eggs. That <laughs> must work. <laughs> so Lola is uh, walking on the road and she's singing that fucking song, the Am I Pretty Enough? Oh, fuck it. I will never be able to listen to that song ever again. <laughs> Not, not that I, I want to listen to it at the best of times, but I'm just thinking, um, yeah, nah, never again. Never It got ever. fucking stuck in my head, dude. I'm like, get out of my head. I fucking hate this song. Because <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of a creepy girl and fucking... Oh. Damn, it's just like, ah, nope. Nope, 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 nope. Nope. That's a whole bag of nope. And yeah. um, she sees Holly approaching in her car, so she hides off the side of the road and she throws her scrapbook at the windshield. And Holly stops, and she's looking around, and then all of a sudden, Lola appears, she opens up her door, and this scene is so good. They're like, you know, they're getting really scrappy and fighting each other, and oh, for a yes. minute, I was like, please don't ho- let Holly die, she can't die, I love Holly. Yeah, I, I thought Holly was going to get it too. I thought fucking Lola's going to like stab her in the neck or something like something that's really, you know, really, really bad, but they fight. And you know they they're rolling around like they actually go through one door and out the other. That's yeah. and, but onto the road and you know fighting and everything else. And, and fucking you know Holly manages to get the better of her. It's like oh thank God, thank God. <sighs> and she starts running down the street, and Lola is in pursuit of her. And then Brent is driving as fast as he can. He's like 140 miles per hour driving in the police car. And as he's coming over the top of the hill, there's Holly, and he swerves to miss her. He looks back and looks forward, and then he fucking hits Lola oh. at 140 miles an hour. It was amazing. Just fucking plows into <laughs> her, and, and like she just goes flying like a fucking, just like a busted bag of tomatoes. She's oh. fucking everywhere. Oh, it was great. Uh, I, when she got hit with the car, I was like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Uh, fuck you! Yeah. Fuck you, bitch! 
<laughs> and and yeah, Holly, yeah. Holly gets into the car with Brent, and she's freaking the fuck out when she sees him because he's all kinds of fucked up. And he, the only way that he can talk is like, <laughs> yeah, that's just fucking. And they're like, she, she's just trying to like make him feel better, and and just oh, and then and oh then yes, go just, into this. Do talk oh. about. This amazing scene. This is so good. They look in the fucking rearview mirror and you can see Lola dragging herself <laughs> along the road. Just fucking still like, on her elbows and knees. And you can see like one of one of her wrists is absolutely snapped. Like there's bone sticking out of her. And she's just like, I fuck kill you. It's just, just crawling along the road. And you can see, like, Brent and Holly, like, exchange looks just for half a second. And they cut back to Lola, and she's crawling along the road. And then Brent puts the car in reverse and just fucking hammers it. And you just hear, and you know that that was just her fucking head just getting smashed. Oh, so good. So So good. good. Oh, it it was like... There was something about it where you were like, yeah, that is satisfying. That was a satisfying yeah. crunch of the head. Yeah. Oh, just, and you just go, yeah, that's it. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you, bitch. And then <laughs> Brent and Holly arrive back home, back to Brent's mom, who gives her son a big hug. And then the credits roll. What a fucking movie. Yeah. Oh, such a good movie. Such a good, not as much tension as obviously high tension, but you know, really, really good. And just fuck it. like you said, Lola, underrated villain, horror villain, because she was just creepy and like so unbalanced, just so fucking out there. And her dad, ugh. yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, dad, dad, ugh. dad, not good, <laughs> not, not oh. just creep yeah just just so incesty lechy just ugh. all kinds of bad but even though yeah. that is just so well, which nasty. kills her mother oh, oh yeah she kills yeah. her own mom and scrambled her brain before that yeah it's what i mean like see you automatically know that this has been going on for a long time and it's yeah. just there's part of me going you know that they're gonna like there'll eventually be an investigation and there'll just be bodies turning up everywhere. Yeah. Cause when they're going through like that scrapbook, she's been doing it since she was like a little fucking kid. There's like little kids. In yes. that photo. Yeah. Yeah. He wearing his pants. <laughs> yeah, no fucking uh, shit, bitch. I, just, <laughs> I wear uh, my pants too. And then, you know, them saying stuff after they've, like, injected him in the neck with, like, the the window cleaner where they're like, we can hear you. Hear you. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. wrong. Oh, my God. But, but uh, fucking fantastic fun. movie. Oh, yeah. so fucking good. Uh, great way to end a double feature. And uh, for you, what would you rate this one out of five? And what are your final thoughts about the loved ones? Look, I think I'm going to have to go 4.5 again. Um, Loved Ones, uh, look, it's an Australian horror movie and and it was made locally to me, which uh, means so much more. But this is is one of those movies that if if you're feeling sort of weird about an ex or something else like that, you watch this and just go, yep, fucking crazy. Crazy, crazy bitch. Just fucking crazy. (laughs) Or crazy, crazy, whatever. Uh, Because you will just, you'll love it. And, And you know what? It's not... It's not super high tension. It's not even super gory, although some of it is fucking scary. But it's just, it's a really well put together um, movie. And like I said, you know, you've got a, a light B story with his mate and and, um, and and the cop's daughter. Like that whole bit about like taking taking the daughter home, who is clearly like drunk off her ass and high. And he's <laughs> going, oh, gee, I must have danced her off her feet. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, nice one, bro. Nice one. Just, just walk away now while you can um yeah you put all that together and it's a really good enjoyable movie um you know there's there's 
there's uncomfortable, there's humour, there's everything going together. Absolutely, 100% worth a watch. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm right there with you, dude. I mean, yeah, I, four and a half out of five for me. This is a fantastic movie. I've seen this a few times. Um, after I saw The Devil's Candy, I was like, I gotta watch The Loved Ones. I have to see this. And after I watched uh, The Loved Ones, I was like, I, anything that Sean Byrne comes out with, I'm there because, you know, the the two out of the the two films that he's made so far, I am a huge fan of. Um, so yeah, if you haven't seen The Loved Ones in a while, check this one out. If you've never seen The Devil's Candy, highly recommend that movie. So fully support yeah. that. Uh, yeah, fully so support good. that. Really good movie. And um, that's it, guys. That was High Tension and The Loved Ones, a fucking awesome double feature. And, uh, dude, thank you so much for joining me, man. This was great. Thank you for having me. I've had the, the best fun, and I've really enjoyed uh, the double headers that you've been running, mate. I hope you keep going for ages on these because it is great to listen to. Well, you're more than welcome to come back anytime because it was so much fun just shooting the shit with you and talking about two really badass movies. Oh, sure. I will look forward to it. And, um, you know, let folks know, uh, again, where they can find your show um, and where they can find you on uh, social media. Okay, so you can find me on Legion Podcast. That's legionpodcast.com, uh, along with, obviously, Desmond's Flicks and a heap of other really great shows on social media. H E Y C H, and if you go to the Facebooks and search, for I will turn up. My pages will turn up. Come and join the fun. Have a bit of a laugh. Uh, while uh, I may not do quite as many serious and high-hitting movies like Desmond, we do have a good laugh, and that's what it's all about. And folks, be sure to check it out. We just did an episode on Blood Beach, which was a ton of fun. Um, yeah. Go and check out the podcast fantastic dude fantastic show and you are all fantastic people for listening to another episode of desmond's flicks and be sure to check out my youtube channel desmond's flicks and be sure to follow me on social media facebook twitter instagram all that good stuff at desmond's flicks with all that said i will see you all next week same spooky time same spooky channel If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which Versus the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found. <laughs>